Welcome to the first day of the first week in ordinary time for this liturgical year. We'll remain here in ordinary time until Lent and then resume on Monday after Pentecost. For the next weeks, our first readings come from the books of Samuel. And today, we focus on Hannah. We have met Hannah recently, on December 22nd, in conjunction with Mary's Magnificat in the Gospel for that day. And that is how we frequently encounter Hannah. But I suggest today that we take a little time to consider Hannah for herself and what she might have to say to us. The books of Samuel tell us about the transition from judges to the monarchy in Israel's history, from Eli and Samuel to David. We begin that story with Hannah. She's the long-suffering wife of Elkanah, not for lack of his love, but because she is childless, an object of mockery and derision given that childless women at the time suffered significant social stigma. Most particularly, she suffers from Elkanah's second wife, Penina, who has two sons. Today, we see her weeping copiously in her suffering, praying at the temple to the Lord that she may have a child, and in fact, making a vow to the Lord that if she has a son, she will dedicate him for his entire life to the Lord. And indeed, when Elkanah had relations with her, she conceived and gave birth to Samuel. After he is weaned, she takes him to the temple in fulfillment of her vow. What follows, captured in our responsorial psalm for today, is Hannah's prayer of thanks to the Lord from the second chapter, before we move tomorrow to the story of Samuel himself. And what might be the invitation for each of us, male and female, in reflecting on Hannah's story? First of all, her faith. As she prays to the Lord, we are told, long at prayer. Are we willing and patient enough to spend time to be long at prayer? Furthermore, she openly reveals to the Lord in her bitterness the dimensions of her suffering, seemingly not holding back, opening herself to the Lord and even to the priest Eli, who accuses her of being drunk as she prays silently. And I wonder whether we, when we turn to the Lord in our need and perhaps suffering, are as open, fully expressing what we desire, and then, in spiritual freedom, being willing to recognize and accept that God's response may be different from our request. Looking to the last part of this chapter, we might anticipate anguish at her giving her son entirely to the Lord. Yet instead, she breaks into this magnificent song of thanks to the Lord, part of which is our responsorial psalm for the day. My heart exults in the Lord, my Savior. It might be worthwhile just to sit in prayer with this section of the second chapter of Samuel, taking it verse by verse and reflecting on our own prayerful response to it. Her joy is palpable, and we might well in our own day, perhaps in the context of the examined prayer at the end of the day, consider the gifts that we are given, sometimes not even seen until we spend the time to look at them, holding them up to God from the significant to the seemingly insignificant. It's in her song that we see her recognition, recognition of the new order of things, where God turns our human order upside down, where there is no rock like our God. The bows of the mighty are broken, the hungry no longer have to toil. 
he raises the needy from the dust and where he guards the footsteps of his faithful ones. It's not an accident that we are reminded here of Mary's Magnificat. May we then, in prayerful reflection today, sing out our own gratitude for the goodness of the Lord in our own lives now and in the past, and look for evidence of the same goodness in the wider context of our community, our nation, and our world. A helpful antidote to the unending crush of disasters and calamities in our world. Not to dismiss these, but to see in faith and hope the presence of God in all. <laughs>